The third and final join I will show you, and that exists at least to my knowledge, is the outer join. Uh, more often than not, you'll use the inner join. Um, sometimes you use the cross join, and then sometimes you'll need the outer join. Probably you will probably need the outer join more than you'll need the cross join. But I'm not going to make any predictions about your future career and what kind of projects you end up working on. Um, going back to let's see, we had this. Venn diagram I showed you yesterday. The inner join basically matches up everything that is common between the two tables. I think the example I had was uh, uh, like customers and orders, and basically where do the customers match up? So, so if I had customers, if I took all the customers in the Northwind database and put them over here, and I take all the or the orders in the Northwind database and put them over here, there are some customers of this Northwind theoretical company that have not placed any orders. So they don't sit here because they're 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 not a customer that placed an order. They sit over here. All customers with orders would be where the two circles overlap. Here's all the customers with the orders. Orders but customers without orders would be over in this left hand portion of the Venn diagram. And, and don't let these circles throw you off. It's it's really not that complicated. Have you made it an order or have you not? Alright, so anyway Going back here, let's, let's uh, select Splat from Customers. I'm going to alias the table name. Join orders. Oh, on C dot customer ID equals O dot customer ID. Execute the query. Here we have all the customers who have placed an order. Now, um, there's 830 rows. But watch what watch what happens here if I say left outer join. All right, and there's some options I can do here: left, right, or full. Let's start with left. Left outer join. Basically, I'm saying, hey, if there are rows in this table on the left that do not have a match on the right, still include that row. So let's just run this. Remember, we have 830 results. So let's run this. F5. Scroll down to the bottom. See the number: 832. So there are two renegade customers in our database that they're customers, but they're not making any orders. We should probably call them up and see if they're interested in anything. Now you can manually scroll through this data and try to figure out who it is. Instead of searching through the data manually just to find that, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, let's order by o.customerid. Run that. And notice up here at the top we have these two customers. Scroll to the right. Now again, a join is simply takes the table on the left and puts it on the left, and the table on the right, and puts it on the right, and matches the rows in some way. So it still matches customer ID to uh, to customer ID here. But notice these two rows. Since we're putting the table, the orders table on the right, and there are no orders for these particular customers, uh, SQL simply just says, oh, okay, let's just insert null. Just throw null in there. So the left outer join says, hey, keep everything on the left. And if, you, if they have no matches, just pair them up with an empty row. row. Now there's also, uh, I could say, right outer join. But, but there are no orders due to uh, the foreign key constraints. We'll study that later. Uh, let me just, for now, take my word that there are no orders that exist that are orphaned, meaning all orders have a customer. So if I say right outer join, that actually is isn't going to do much. Uh, we still 830 rows because every order has a customer. Um, but watch what happens here. I, I could just take this customers table and swap it with the orders table. And put that over there. Rerun it. And notice here, oh, here's the nulls again. Here's the nulls. The, the, right, out, the right outer join said, hey, if there's customers that don't have any orders, keep them around, which is true. So hopefully you're scratching your head a little bit and thinking, you know, it seems like a right outer join is the same as a left outer join, except instead it's considering the table on the right for no matches versus the left, and you would be correct. Right or left, it doesn't matter. I've always seen left. I've never seen right. I don't suggest ever doing a right outer join, um, simply because people are used to left outer joins. We start at the left and we work our way right. But you could do a right outer join. If you want to consider both tables, you could also say full outer join which would mean take things on, take, take elements on both sides and, and we'll keep them there. Just for some further uh, illustration, I added a couple tables to my Northwind database. 
I have this first table, I have the second table. Notice the contents of the first table. I have, basically it's one column, and there's two rows, I have A, B. And then second table, I have B, C. So the Venn diagram for this thing would be, uh, if I can just do it down here in comments, uh, A would be on the left, and then what they have in common is B, so that would be in the middle, and then the this table, the second table, uh, it owns C individually. So there we go. There's there's my uh, ASCII Venn, Venn diagram. <laughs> anyway, let's let's join these two tables just to show some outer joins again. Let's join first table, the second table, and I'm going to call first table F and second table S. Let's join them on F dot the data. And just notice I called the column in both tables. I called it the data. That's not necessary. It can be called whatever. Uh, in order to do these joins, it doesn't matter that the column names are the same. Uh, let's do where f dot the data equals s dot the data. And let's get rid of this. And then just run this. And notice there we go. There's the intersection. They both have b in common. So that's an inner join. In fact, you can also type inner join if you wish to be explicit. I don't think I've ever seen that out in industry. I bet there are people that do. But for the most part, we just say join because inner join is the most common join. I'm going to say instead of full, let's do left first. Left join. So remember, and let me let me get the table data back up. Select splat from first table and uh, second table, and I'm going to get the data back up. I don't I don't want to do the query gate yet. Just remember this 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 inner join had we had before. Well, here we'll just bring that. Okay. So first table A B. Second table, B, C, and the join of them is B and B. Now, if I say left join, let's do left join. Well, that means keep everything from the left table, even if there is no match. Well, the left table is first table, which is this table down here. And the, notice A, A doesn't have a partner in the second table. So, so let me execute this, watch what happens. I said left outer join, so it kept A. But to fill in the data for the table on the right, which is second table, if I can get it, uh, it we just have to insert nulls. Now watch what happens if I do uh, a right join. Well, now we get C from the right table. But to fill in the data for the first table, uh, we just uh, SQL Server puts in null. And then I could say full, full join. I think I can say full join. Yep, full join. And... Uh, we have what's what's over in the first table. We also have what's in the second table. We, we get both non-matching elements. Anyway, so so that's outer join in a nutshell.